video game industry is built upon tentpole releases, games that define a genre, revolutionize storytelling, or employ innovative game mechanics. Some of gaming's biggest titles are remembered for those reasons, from Ocarina of Time's near seamless transition from 2D to 3D, Halo revolutionizing the home console first person shooter genre, or Undertale for its meta narrative and gameplay. On the flip side, there are games that are remembered for the complete opposite, for failing entirely in one area or another. E.T. for Atari 2600, Superman 64, Big Rigs, Sonic 06, Bubsy 3D, Ride to Hell Retribution, titles that, for whatever reason, be it time constraints, engine issues, or just plain bad game design, failed to fully capture the vision the team set out to make. But what about those games that fall in the middle? Games that avoid the trappings of some of gaming's worst titles, but don't set the world on fire. Games that are just okay harmless, inoffensive, yet still fun. There have been a countless number of these games throughout the years, games that are fun but fail to make an impression, which brings us to the subject of today's video, Days Gone. Recently, Jeff Ross, formerly of Sony's Ben Studios, took to Twitter to lament on his game's reception and the internal attitude towards its sales figures. Essentially, Ross posed the question of, if Days Gone and fellow PS4 exclusive Ghost of Tsushima sold around the same amount, why was the former viewed as a failure by Sony where the latter was viewed as a success? While the sales of both titles aren't officially known, the question still stands and I think I have the answer. Before we get into it, I want to let my feelings be known about Days Gone. I had fun, I enjoyed my time with Days Gone, and I really had no gripes or issues with most if not all of Deacon St. John's zombie adventure. And that's sort of the issue. Days Gone is a competent title, which is why I believe Sony and most of the industry viewed it as a disappointment. Let's set the stage a bit before we get into the meat of this discussion. The PS4 is one of Sony's most successful and popular consoles next to the PS2. From its debut in 2013 to its successor's launch in 2020, nearly every year had a major release that defined the PS4's legacy and built up an incredible library of first-party titles. After some lack Cluster launch titles, PS4 owners received Infamous Second Son in 2014, Sucker Punch's swan song to the Infamous series, From Software's Bloodborne in 2015, which became an instant classic, solidifying the Soulsborne genre within the industry, Naughty Dog's Uncharted 4, which was the best in the series and showcased just how amazing games could look on the PS4, 2017 brought Guerrilla Games' Horizon Zero Dawn that brought a whole new and fascinating world to life while battling Breath of the Wild for Game of the Year, God of War's Revival, quite possibly the console's greatest game, launched in 2018, not to mention Insomnia creating the definitive Spider-Man video game experience that same year, and 2020 had the much-anticipated second part of the Last of Us franchise, as well as the aforementioned Ghost of Tsushima. Days Gone was done in by a combination of its actual quality and the time of its release. It seemed as though every year, the big PS4 title that would drop would be better than the next, slowly ramping up the excitement and expectations of its fanbase and the gaming community at large. Days Gone had to follow up both God of War, which was almost unanimously determined as one of the greatest games of his generation, and Marvel's Spider-Man, which redefined the superhero in a video game space. Days Gone was also competing against Death Stranding the same year, which had garnered a massive amount of hype simply on the fact that people were eager to figure out what the hell it actually was. That's not mentioning The Last of Us Part II, one of the most highly anticipated releases of the PS4's life, was set to release just a year after Days Gone. The obvious similarities between the two of a dark, zombie, character-driven story and third-person shooting didn't help much either. Hell, even most onlookers, myself included, thought Days Gone's reveal was The Last of Us 2. So if you were a PlayStation fan, and since 2015 you got Bloodborne, Uncharted 4, Horizon, God of War, and Spider-Man, not to mention countless other titles like Little Big Planet 3, the Ratchet & Clank reboot, Detroit Become Human, or Until Dawn, it's not hard to see why it was almost expected that Days Gone would be either equal to or better than those titles. We'll touch on the fairness of that mindset in a bit, but that's the climate Days Gone was dealing with when it released in April of 2019. Not that I'm making this a comparison video, but for the sake of perspective, Ghost of Tsushima was the last PS4 exclusive game just months before the PS5 was set to release, taking the expectations and heat off of it a bit more than Days Gone. Now, now the second strike against Days Gone was the game itself. Like I said before, Days Gone is competent. It's fine. It's okay. It's even good, honestly. But it's not special in any way, and that's where its popularity issues lie. Days Gone is a third-person action shooter motorcycle riding open-world zombie game. Think Undead Nightmare by way of The Lost and Damned. It achieves each of those monikers just well enough to form a competently designed video game product. As sarcastic as that might sound, it's sort of true. Days Gone is remarkably unremarkable in almost every aspect. If you were to think of every mechanic your typical open-world game has, Days Gone's got it. A day and night cycle with changing weather patterns, random encounters, places to explore to find resources to gather which you can use in a crafting system, side missions aplenty, the ability to mark enemies at camps to raid for various high-level goodies, vendors to buy weapons from or repair your bike, tailing missions, following NPCs for a long amount of time as they vomit up exposition, skill points and skill trees, 
stealth, both optional and mandatory, a focus mode that lets you see certain things in the environment, you name it, Days Gone's got it. The shooting feels as good as any competent third person shooter would be, with a variety of weapons to use from your typical pistols, assault rifles, shotguns, and snipers. Besides your weapons, the inventory is stuffed to the broom with healing items, explosives, and other items to use throughout the world. You can use these various weapons and items on enemies which are broken down between gang members who wield weapons, and zombies or freaks who are primarily melee focused. Let's talk about the zombies for a bit because it's both an issue and its most intriguing feature. Zombie games are a dime a dozen, hell zombie anything at this point are. Games, TV shows, movies, books, you name it, zombies have infected it. It's gotten to the point where zombies have oversaturated almost every market they're a part of, so when Sony reveals yet another game about shooting zombies, it's not really going to move the needle for most folks regardless of its quality. To me, zombies are like comfort food. Even though I'm stuffed and really shouldn't have any more, I always seem to muster up the effort for one more bite. There's nothing necessarily wrong about zombies as a concept, and even though they're really played out trope at this point, I can always go back to shooting some undead for a little bit of fun, and that's what Days Gone offers in droves. Days Gone's main selling point would probably have to be the hordes, massive groups of freaks that wander the Oregon forests and will tack on sight. Even the most hardened Days Gone critic has to admit the hordes are visually impressive and a bit terrifying, but even executing them as well as Days Gone does, it's still nothing at all new for the genre. Left 4 Dead had an insane amount of zombies on screen at once back in 2008. Hell, skip a few years back to Dead Rising for another great example. Granted, these examples don't execute this feature at the fidelity of Days Gone and not in a true open world setting, but it's really nothing we haven't experienced before, especially those who are consumers of the undead, which is primarily the audience it's targeting. But Days Gone isn't just a mindless zombie shooting gallery, it also has a mature story with loss and a corrupt government with shady scientists and people just trying to survive and so on and so forth. Just like almost everything, the story isn't anything to write home about, but it doesn't set the game back. It's entertaining, but nothing that's going to bring you to tears or shock you with twists and turns you didn't see coming. I will say this area of the game is where my favorite aspect of Days Gone resides, and that's the protagonist, Deacon St. John. Deacon is as generic as generic can get. A white, gruff, bearded male protagonist who lost his wife and fights to survive in a zombie apocalypse. Stop me if you've heard that one before. Deacon really comes alive for me because of his voice actor, Sam Witwer. There's something about Witwer's performance, be it the direction or just his talent in general, it's just so mesmerizing. It feels like Witwer is just ad-libbing nearly every line to the point that the dialogue feels like unbelievably natural between Deacon and anyone he speaks with. It's this bizarre combination of off-kilter mannerisms and genuine sincerity that makes Deacon so fun to watch interact with the world around him. Jesus Christ. Boozer, what the fuck? I I heard, I heard him. I heard voices. Oh shit! I mean, you, you, you heard him, right? No, I didn't hear shit, Boozer. You got no, blood poisoning. I, I do not. Yes, you do, Boozer. Just take a look. I don't need to take a look. Come on, I'm we gotta get you some help. Look, I don't need some. Come on. I don't need help. <sighs> Praise for Whitworth's performance aside, you're probably thinking I'm being unfair to Days Gone, and you'd be right for the most part. I'll reiterate, Days Gone is not a bad game, far from it. It takes everything it sets out to do and does it near perfectly. It's just what it does isn't compelling, mind-blowing, or innovative. And this poses the question, is that a bad thing? Well, the answer is a bit complicated, I think. I have no problem recommending Days Gone to anyone, really. It's a solid game with no real issues that hamper the experience, but it's not a game that'll leave an impression on you. A game that you'll walk away from yearning for more, or a game you'll look back on years from now and remember fondly, and that's okay. Contrary to popular belief, it's okay to be okay. Not every game has to break sales records or shake the industry to its core. Not every game can be Breath of the Wild or God of War, nor do I think they probably should be. Innovation is key to pushing our industry forward, but there's nothing wrong with a game that sets out to do something that's been done before and just nails it. Now, that's not to say we as consumers should expect baseline competency as a standard. Every game should strive to be the best version it can be, and sometimes that's just not the case. I'm sure you can name a few games and put <laughs> here some examples. All studios, big or small, are driven to create the best game that they can, and Ben Studios succeeded in my opinion. Would I have liked them to try something new, or maybe a spin on either zombie games or the open world genre entirely? Of course, I'll always give the benefit of the doubt to a game that tries something different or unique even if it doesn't quite hit the mark. Death Stranding comes to mind, but I don't think it's too unfair to extend that same mindset to a game that just accomplishes what it set out to do. There's plenty of games out there that are just solid titles, but the issues Days Gone is faced with are compounded by its publisher. Remember the stage I said a while back about all those games Days Gone had to live up to? Well, that wasn't just something the gaming publisher
public was fixated on, but also Sony. Sony is a company, and as a company, its main goal is to make money, and while the overall budget of Days Gone isn't known, to the public anyway, it's considered a AAA release. Judging solely based on its visual and performance quality alone, not to mention that Sony paid nearly $8 million in advertising during the month of its release, and the fact that it was delayed a number of times, it's safe to say that Days Gone cost Sony a pretty penny. A pretty penny that they were looking to recoup. Regardless of if Days Gone revolutionized the open world zombie shooter or not, the fact of the matter is that it most likely didn't make a profit due to Sony deeming it, internally anyway, a failure, and refusing to greenlight a sequel. It's all about a product relative to its budget. It goes without saying that an indie game with a budget of blood, sweat, and tears selling 6 million copies versus a AAA game with an approximate budget of upwards of 30 to 40 million are two very distinct cases. There are plenty of great games out there that just didn't sell well. Some examples coming to mind would probably be the original Psychonauts or Beyond Good and Evil. In a perfect world, we'd get Days Gone 2, with Ross and Ben Studios building on its base to make a truly revolutionary zombie open world shooter, but we don't live in a perfect world. We live in a world where it doesn't pay to be okay, and where decent games very rarely get a second lease on life. I can envision a time, years from now, when the PS4 is considered retro, where Days Gone will be rediscovered and viewed as a hidden gem of the system's library, but for now it's relegated to the ledgers of the PlayStation history books, all because it didn't set the world on fire. Things never seem to change but they still are not the same as they were yesterday.